Good morning, everybody. It is June 10th. It's early in the morning, maybe a little before 7.30. And it's just a beautiful morning. It's peaceful and quiet and a little bit chilly. It's, I think, in the 50s. So it feels really nice for June. I got a tiny bit of rain last night. Not nearly enough to make up for all the rain that we've lost. You can see the grass is crispy brown back here, but I will take whatever we can get. So I thought I would take you around on a little early June garden tour. I'm gonna try to do a walkthrough about once a week. I really enjoy seeing other people's gardens on a weekly basis so I thought that that would be fun for me to do in my own garden and looking back I think I will really appreciate being to, able to see the progression of everything every week. So come along with me as I do a quick little walk through with you and show you what has changed since the last time. Alright why don't we start over here in my obelisk bed. Everything is really starting to look a little more green and I'm getting a little bit more color. This bed is definitely a work in progress. I someday hope to add something to these bare walls. I'm thinking either some trellises or a Belgian style type fence with kind of an evergreen climbing vine. Uh, I have planted some hollyhocks in here and some sunflowers. The hollyhocks will not bloom until next year, but I thought that this bed would be really pretty as kind of a cottagey bed with just a mixture of all different kinds of things behind this boxwood hedge that I put in last fall, which you can see is starting to fill in nicely. They were teeny tiny little plants when I put them in and they are definitely putting on some nice growth. And in this bed right now I have planted a coneflower which is summer song fire finch proven winners. I'm really trying to add a variety of color back here, which I tend to go towards the pinks and purples and um, just the whites, but I really think I want a variety of color. So that is my goal. And next to the fire bench, I have a tiny little patio tomato, which is putting on some new buds, you can see. In previous years I had a large tomato growing up one of my obelisks on the other side of my yard and kind of a little veggie garden but I really didn't love how that tomato ended up looking most of the summer and my yard is so small I really want things to look pleasing to the eye so I decided to incorporate my some smaller veggies into my flowers these are some baby cucumbers coming up along the fence here. One there, and one there. My goal is to have it climb this little portion of fence. I think it'll be cute. I have some of the six fires, blue salvia that is budding. That will get beautiful as the summer goes on. So pretty. And behind them, I have some baby sunflowers beginning to come. I have had a time with the sunflowers. They are getting eaten by the rabbits and who knows what else. I have some more stone in the ground there. I'm really hoping that they 
can all make it and kind of produce this sunflower um, backdrop against this bare wall right here. I think we'll, we'll be pretty if I can get them to grow. In the ground, I have some zinnia that I self-seeded, that I direct, direct seeded. This is a fall, I think it's fall in love sweetly anemone that I thought I might have lost because um, it took forever to pop out of the ground. But I have another one over on that side as well, but it is coming back. These are some more zinnia. I think the binary giant in here coming along nicely, slowly, but nicely. That is a uh, purple hyacinth bean vine. It is sprouting up well next to a sweet pea vine. My sweet peas are intermixed with my purple hyacinth bean vine. They are very slowly growing. I don't know if I'll get blooms from them or not, but that'll be interesting to see. And my Mucho Nacho Jalapeno, which I also forgot to show you on that side. I have one over there too. They are seeming to put on some nice growth and fruit. This is the tag. I can get in there and show you. Mucho Nacho. This is my star sunflower that is doing the best. These are all pro cut gold sunflowers. I have some more along the back. And then these are actually hogpocks that are coming up. Which again, I think would be just kind of a nice backdrop on this wall. A mixture of hollyhocks and some cottagey flowers. My limetta hydrangea is looking beautiful. And this is a Melina Fleur Dahlia that is putting on a lot of growth. I am excited to see what she looks like. Another summer song, Fire Fent Coneflower. Isn't that color beautiful? It's just this red, pinky, kind of orangey color. So pretty. This is my Tonto Crepe Myrtle. It is looking beautiful and doing really well. In a previous video, I think my last video, I planted these orchid sun patients, which I am hoping will come up over the boxwood and just get really big and tall and bushy and fill in this space does get part shade so it'll be interesting to see how well they actually do. These are all winter gem boxwood. I don't know if I said that before. And another Limetta hydrangea. It's so beautiful. One of my favorite hydrangeas. Just blooms prolifically and early and all summer and you can deadhead it for the blooms to kind of refresh themselves and come back in the later summer. So pretty. Next to my hydrangea, I have a denim, denim and lace Russian sage. Starting to put on its purple buds. Love it. And they will also lasts all summer long, just providing this beautiful purple color all summer. 
take you back through this way. So you can very slowly see this bed before I move on to the other side. Pan you around this way. These are the derung boxwoods that I had planted in the spring that are doing well. They have some sunflowers growing back in here as well that are also struggling to survive the rabbits. But you can see there are a few, uh, maybe just a sprout there. Some there, and some down the way. I hope I can get them to grow. I think they would look so pretty against this fence. This is a dahlia under here that is kind of struggling to get uh, growth on it, some good growth on it. This is actually, I think, David Howard. Dahlia, which I've never tried before. I'm excited to try it. My limelight prime hydrangea is doing so well. This is only its second year. And it is just really growing like crazy. And I love those purpley dark stems on it. It's so pretty and sturdy. You can see there's lots of buds that will be coming along our purple purple pillar rose of Sharon hedge I have just a mixture of perennials my goal is to fill this space up with lots of different color and texture this is only its second let's see second full season I think so I still have a lot that I want to play with and do back here but I'll show you what I've got so far. I have some mint in a pot to keep it from spreading, keep it contained. This is a peony that is quite small that I put in, I think last year I transplanted it from another part of the yard. So no, grow no flowers on that this year. These are some more banana, what are these? Not the Neri's giant, they might be state fair mix zinnias that are looking good. And this is Royal, let's see, Royal Sunset Lily. Not yet showing color, but butted up like crazy. My little herb garden right here. some sage, some thyme, which is already flowering. I put that in last year. I might, I don't know if I'll cut the flowers back or just let them for the pollinators. I have some dill and some rosemary way down in there. These are my buried treasure pink. strawberries that are putting on lots of growth and beautiful pink flowers. I just love those pink flowers. I think they're so pretty. This is a big clump of Black Eyed Susan. have a daisy, just a traditional daisy coming up in there. I did a lot of transplanting in the fall, so, and split, splitting, so some of my plants aren't very big yet. 
jalapeno intermixing my vegetables with my perennials I still have some allium that are up I want to put a marker in the ground so that I remember where all my allium were so I can add some more for next year so I know where to put them This is an elephant ear. What is this? Oriole Hawaiian. Aloha. I have had these in some pots last year and they get beautiful purple, like greenish purple leaves. You can see on this side better. It'll get a lot bigger than this. You can see the rain on the leaves, the drops, the raindrops makes me so happy. More daisies. And this is a cat's pajama nepeta next to some nasturtium that I, that I um, direct sewed into the ground. This is my first year growing nasturtium. So I'm anxious to see how this will do. You can see the beautiful variegated leaves. These will get um, kind of a variegated, I think they're the Alaska mix. So a variegated like red and orange toned flowers. More Daisy, Black Eyed Susan. This is another, um, I don't know if I said this down the way, but this is a powwow pink flower that has yet to put on color again one that I split doesn't have a whole lot of color yet these are raspberry ripple um, zinnias that are struggling a little bit to take off hopefully they'll take off here soon another catch pajamas cat mint and I have my purple iris back in here next to some butter lettuce that's, I would say, almost ready to be harvested. That sits next to my little lime hydrangea. And these dahlias are stealing the show right now. This is a Mystic Illusion Dahlia. I found this at a little Amish, not little, but one of my favorite Amish greenhouses up in the Lancaster, excuse me, Lancaster area. It's called Hillside, I believe. Hillside is Hillside or Hilltop. I can't remember. I'll put it on this screen. But um, oh my goodness, just such a bright yellow, just such a happy color against this beautiful foliage, this dark purple foliage. It's so pretty. And I, I just saw them and I had to pick them up. They just looked so happy to me. So I got three of those Mystic Illusion Dahlia and they, they've just been blooming like crazy. My lamb's ear are not looking so hot. <laughs> I need to come in and get off all the dead uh, brown leaves. This is, this is just real life. I'm not sugarcoating anything here. Um, this is the Helen, Helen Von Steen, Von Stein lamb's ear that gets big, beautiful foliage, which I'm hoping to divide and spread along this border. And as we walk along, most of this is the same as the other side. I try to keep it rather consistent with a few, a few differences, maybe just a couple, but you can see I have the same repetition of nasturtium in the ground. This, one, this side's struggling to come up a little bit. Cat's pajamas, nepeta. The raspberry ripple, zinnias, more nepeta, 
We're going to start some the Black Eyed Season Cove Flower and Daisy. And then another lily. This is the Stargazer lily. That is yet to put on a flower for me. More zinnias. This back here is SH Date Dahlia, which is looking very nice as well. And I love this too because it also gets the dark, almost purpley foliage, just like the David Howard. And they both get this beautiful kind of salmon colored flower. love that color so much. These are my wee white hydrangeas that are doing pretty good with my shadow. <laughs> they do tend to get a little bit crispy on the flowers I've noticed in the sun. A little brown and crispy. So we'll have to see how they end up doing. And this is my Twombly's Red Sentinel Japanese Maple that I planted a few weeks ago on another video that is looking really nice. It's doing really well. I'll just take you back slowly through so you can take it all in. over to my shade area okay I know it doesn't look like it right now but this is the shadier part of my yard it gets morning Sun and the morning Sun slowly moves away this area over here is the first to get shade so I, uh, you can see that I put in a shepherd's hook with a hummingbird feeder, which they have yet to find. <laughs> it might take a little while for them to find that, but I'm excited to see more hummingbirds in my yard this year. This beautiful basket my mom gave to me, she had at her house. It's just a really pretty woven basket with a big leaf begonia in it. Our obelisks that uh, my husband and I worked to build, mostly my husband. And you can see that I put in this really pretty river of impatience. Last year I put in a light pink color and I just didn't feel like you could see it well enough. So this year I went with the bolder, brighter colors of all the different pinks and reds and oranges and whites. Salmons. Just think are so beautiful. And I look out my window as I wake up in the morning and just look down on this river of color. It's so pretty. My Annabelle hydrangea are doing well. Not quite put on all of their buds yet, but definitely budded up and ready to burst.
under these cloches I have this Japanese forest grass that the bunnies have been nibbling on so I'm trying to protect it. My hope is to divide the forest grass and spread it in front of these um, hydrangeas. I hope to fill this area up with lots of different perennials, hosta grasses, sh more shade loving plants as time goes on. And I had planted two clematis at the base of each one of these obelisks. I'll show you this one. It's a pink mink clematis. However, the bunnies came in and basically almost ate it to the ground. I can see a little bit of new growth right there, which is exciting. But the other one, I they completely chopped to the ground. So I don't know if it's going to come back or not. We'll have to see. This um, is kind of my hosta area. In my last video, I planted this blue, blue, e sorry, blue mouse ears hosta. It's just this adorable, tiny, maybe six to eight inches tall and six to eight inches wide hosta with some really pretty um, like purpley flowers on it that the pollinators are supposed to love. You can see there's one I think on its way. And again this I hope to be able to use and divide as time goes on along with a lot of my other perennials to save some money. My columbine is still going. These are um, Queen of Hearts Brunera that I interplanted with the columbine. Hoping that as they get bigger they can cover up kind of the tattered columbine foliage as the summer goes on since that that plant does not love the heat and tends to get a little ratty looking in the heat of the summer. You can see back in here, this is the service berry, Autumn Brilliance, which definitely lives up to its name in the fall. It gets just gorgeous, bright orange fall color. Underneath that I have a lot of other hostas. These are um, Autumn Brilliance Fern. And these are, let's see, Wild Berry Hookera. I love the combinations down here, the colors and how this is filling in. You can see my wee hosta. It's putting on its flowers, looking pretty. I just put that in this year along with the Halcyon Hasta and that is an elegans. I, I misnamed it in another video. My mom had given that to me as a split. I think I called it Big Daddy or Guacamole or something, but it's an elegans. And I also have another, I forget the name of this one. It's another blue Hasta that is peeping through. I put that in in the fall. And I thought I had lost that one as well because it took so long for it to come up, but it's finally up. And I will definitely maybe transplant that somewhere else in here in the fall or next spring. My camellias back here are not looking promising. <laughs> they are looking crispy, half dead. So I We'll have to come up with another game plan for back here, probably. I'd love to have a little evergreen kind of hedge along this corner for a little bit more privacy. You can see that we look out on the circle, so I'd love to conceal that a little bit.
And then over here, it's pretty much the same. These are some rocks that my daughter painted me a couple of years ago for my gardens. I think they're so sweet. I love them. Another little blue hosta, the same as the other side that I thought I lost, but it's up again. This is a Casablanca lily. More elegans and halcyon, halcyon hosta. We. And down here, I have a lamium, which I did have three. Two of them seem to have died out. Actually, there's a little sprout there. I'm just gonna let this spread wherever it wants to for now. This area is just such a nice, reprieve in the hot summer when it gets nice and shady. Walking down the path here past my green giants and my skip laurel hedge that I pruned a few days ago. It's looking pretty. Nice and green. The grass over here is doing much better than the other side, faring much better with this um, little drought that we're having. Over here is where I had planted a whole patch of zinnias. And you can see that they are Coming up. This is a mixture of Benary's Giant and State Fair zinnias. Hoping to fill in this area with a bunch of color. And my tiny black eyed Susans are starting to show color. This is Becky, Ruta Becky. Looking so pretty. over here. Um, these are my, let's see, Sweet Talker. Sweet Talker by Burnham. I blanked out on the name. <laughs> In front of those I just planted um, some Ageratum just to add a little bit of color. You can see that this one is a nice size. I just bought this one and the one other one on the end this year. And then this one down here, which I'll show you what's behind it, is much shorter and been eaten by the rabbits. I did not know that rabbits would just take down a big shrub, but they have. These get about three to five feet wide and maybe eight feet tall. So I think they'll add a, just be a nice addition to this side of the fence. And behind this one, I had a little garden in this space last year with um, my tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and this year decided to add the shrubs. But I had sowed some hollyhock seed and this is the only one that came back and it is huge. So I just let it go. I just really want to see what it does. You can see how big the leaves are. I put my hand on it. It's bigger than my hand. And they have lots of buds on them. So I will definitely show you when that starts to bloom.
that is my early June backyard update. I hope you guys all enjoy your Saturday and have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye.